so we can't eat pork. Where did y'all get that from? What part of the Bible did y'all get that from? Because I need to make sure that we all understand what we are reading. Now, the Apostle Paul told us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, that's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Go look it up. Because he told us that the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some shall take heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And then they're going to command us to abstain from marriage. They're going to command us to abstain from certain meats which God had created. And every creature is good as long as you receive it with thanksgiving and is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Now, the same people who probably telling us you can't eat pork, they probably got a plate full of crab legs, shrimp, mussels, clams, all that seafood. But they ain't telling you about that part. But we got to understand what how the Bible is in context so that we can understand how to teach it. Certain people go see a certain portion and then they tell people, oh, we can't do this. We can't do that. But they forget that we're under grace and truth now. We're under grace and truth. We're in liberty to live a free life in Christ Jesus without the legalism, without the legalism of the law. All right. Shalom, brothers and sisters out there. All uh, praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right, and this video is going to be entitled, The Savior Did Not Die to Free You from the Law. <clears throat> the Savior did not die to free you from the law. This is a ridiculous notion that Christians often push. It's like every time we see a, a black Christian, they're being, uh, they're being pressed. I use the word pressed. By the word that's going forth throughout the earth and they feel guilty and they keep trying to they keep trying to explain away what's clear in the scriptures. There's an unclean and a clean in the Bible. You can't eat unclean things, period. No matter what kind of whack false breakdown you try to come with, you twisting and turning, trying to make, you know, act as if like there's like like there's not a clean and an unclean in the Bible. And there clearly clearly is. Now, you know, this video in the beginning, I put it in the intro. Some brothers shared this the other day. I kind of, you know, grabbed on to it and saved it on my phone. I just said, you know, when I felt like it, when the spirit moved me, I would do a, le a lesson on it. Look, at the end of the day, if, if you people want to eat dirty, unclean things, then you can just do it. But you're not going to be innocent. Okay, let's go right to the scriptures. It's aggravating to see stupid black Christians constantly going on and on about eating some damn pork and then they just lie real bad i mean this dude sitting there saying people telling you that you can't eat pork but i bet you they're the same ones got a, a plate of mussels and shrimp and the crab no we don't we're telling you not to eat that we're telling you clearly there's an unclean and a clean in the bible let's deal with that first so let's just go right to it this is the end time prophecy for every pork eating wicked black christian on the planet we're going to read you an end time prophecy of the Savior coming back to the earth. This is Isaiah 66 verse 15. It says, for, for behold, the, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Obviously, this is when the Lord, Yahweh Shah comes back. It says, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Now, Christians ain't never going to break this down to you. They're not going to tell you what the chariots are. They ain't going to tell you about the Lord killing people. But in verse 17, it says, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. This is pork. Eating swine's flesh and the abomination. Anything that the law calls abominable. For you not to eat and the mouse, what's going to happen to him? Shall be consumed together, said the Lord. And this verse, this uh, these few verses mean that when the Savior comes back, if you are committing these things, right, when he brings fire in his sword and, and, and plead with all flesh and slay many people, that if you are eating swine's flesh, if you are guilty of eating it or anything abominable, you shall be consumed with those that who he's going to consume. It's right there in the Bible. You can't get away from that. And if you go further than that, so let before we go on, let's explain it. Why does it say behind one tree in the gardens? There was ancient grove worship, right? Which was 
you know, ancient gardens and uh, trees, you know, worshiping in the forest and doing all these little different uh, rituals and whatnot. And when you go into a church, the way that the archways are, the way that the, the, the ceilings meet and the different stuff, when you go to the Catholic church and the Baptist church is modeled after it, it's likened unto grove, ancient grove and garden worship. That's what it's speaking of. So these modern day churches are guilty of that. The one tree, people are called trees. That one tree is who? That's that preacher, okay? In the church, people are likened unto trees. You should, they should be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Can we get that? Trees of Just for an example, Isaiah 61 and 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So, so people can be called trees, okay? So it's really just allegorical speech. Is what is spoken of, but it tells you plainly, they that sanctify themselves, and when you sanctify, you're cleansed. So they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves, what do they tell you? That you can get baptized, you can be clean from your sins, you get dipped in the baptism pool. So it's the thing where they cleanse themselves behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Now the reason I'm reading this is because this is an end time prophecy. It talks about when the Lord comes back, his second coming. So if you thought that some type of way you could say that, well, this is the Old Testament, that was back then. No, this is the end times. This is the last day when the Lord comes, the end of the world. People that eat swine's flesh will be getting eliminated by the Lord. So you can come with all your little fancy, little twisting words and little breakdown, which is not a breakdown at all. It's just some bullshit that you came up with. You can't get out of that. This is Revelation 21 and 7. It says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's for the elect of the Israelites. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, keep your mind on that, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. So when you go to this word abominable, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable, right? If you go to this word abominable here, it's the Greek word dulioso. And when you go into it, the connotation of abominable is what? To render foul. The definition is to render foul, to cause to be abhorred. Abominable. Metaphor to abhor or detest. Now going here, you see, to be disgusted, i.e. detest, abhor, abominable. If you go into it down here, you see this word abominable here? From the first definition, to render foul, to cause to be abhorred, it gives you precepts. Leviticus 11.43, look what it says. Ye shall not make your souls abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth, neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. It's plain. It's speaking of things that you eat. Leviticus 20, 25. You shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean and between unclean fowls and clean. You shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as un clean you see separated from you as unclean so therefore that day hey, that's two scriptures end time prophecies showing you that you can't eat unclean things there's a clean and an unclean here in revelation 21 and 8 those are going to be destroyed but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and it gave you many a few different precepts and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you're going to be punished with everlasting fire from the, hall, from the Almighty for eating abominable things. You can't just explain it away. Now let's deal with the other part. 
No, you can't eat pork. You can't eat crab, shrimp, lobster, crayfish, eels, vultures, you know, other other uh, unclean things, snails and frog legs and, and rattlesnakes and alligator. You're not supposed to eat that stuff. Catfish and any other fish that don't have fins and scales. You're not supposed to eat manta rays and eels and seal meat. You're not supposed to eat that stuff, man. Squid, octopus. But we know you are... Uh, rebellious out there And you're going to do what you want to do Okay You're going to do what you want to do So do it But you're going to be destroyed for doing it We read two scriptures Unless you If you're a Christian and you watch this If you can't get around them two scriptures What make you think that you can eat whatever you want It's stupid And you Christians You got a lot of pride You're very proud people You sit there boldly And you talk all this all this stuff And you, and you can tell Jake don't don't hardly try to keep no commandments. Now, this dude, the way he talk, he sounds like he might be some type of preacher or, or something. When you look at him, look at his damn lips. This nigga here smoke, man. Okay, th those are smoker lips. Smoker's lips. And he might be lighting the loafers on top of that. Now, he didn't come off particularly as too feminine, but you never know with Jake. Anyway, he said something like, just bear with me here. He said something like, uh, well, let's go to it and listen to it. He said something about the legalism of the law. You know, let's go there. It's near the end. Let's listen to what he says here. That seafood, but they ain't telling you about that part. But we got to understand what, how the Bible is in context so that we can understand how to teach it. Certain people go see a certain portion and then they tell people, oh, we can't do this. We can't do that. But they forget that we're under grace and truth now. We're under grace and truth. We're in liberty to live a free life in Christ Jesus without the legalism, without the legalism of the laws. Yeah, this weird nigga said you can live a free life without the legalism of the law. No, the Savior did not die on the cross to free you from the law. Okay? That's ridiculous. It's just not true. Hold on, brothers. Y'all forgive me. Let's see. All right. The Savior didn't die on the cross to free you from the law. Do you not know that in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have the law in your inward parts? What what good would that do for the Savior to come and, and, and take away the law? Right? As you people say, he, like he did away with the law. Then turn around and put it in your inward parts. Why would he need to do that if he did away with it? Let's go to go to it real quick. Just for a quick example. Hebrews 8. And you will hear Christians say that the law is done away with, but they're under the new covenant. But, a lot, you know, that don't even make sense. Hebrews 8 and 7. For if after that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Now, number one. The law is only to the Israelites anyway. The new covenant is only for the Israelites anyway. <clears throat> so ain't no person that's not an Israelite under either one of the covenants. But you're definitely the new covenant that's going to be fulfilled or, or completed in the kingdom of heaven. Right? That's not even for the other nations. It's only for Israelites. Verse 8 shows you that. It says, for finding fault with them, he said, behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. <clears throat> so the only the new covenant is for the Israelites. Or so the Israelites is only. The new covenant is only for the Israelites. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day. When I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. <clears throat> and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. There it is again. What's he going to do? I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me and they shall be to me a people. If the Most High had sent his son to do away with the law, why would he turn around and bring back the law? He's going to take the law out of the trash and put it into your inward parts. I thought the Savior did away with it. You see, it doesn't even make sense. <clears throat> it goes on. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And you guys out there saying 
that we're under the new covenant now. No, the scriptures tell you that when we're under the new covenant, we're going to all be under it at the same time together. You ain't going to have a handful of guys over here under the new covenant while other people are saying that we're not. The fact that we're saying that we're not under the new covenant shows that we're not. We wouldn't even say that if we was under the new covenant. We would be in agreement. Jeremiah 31, verse 31, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them, Slocket, to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. Yeah, after those days <clears throat> in the kingdom. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they should be to me a people. So the law, we're going to carry it out perfectly in the kingdom of heaven, which means what? We ain't going to eat unclean things. We're not going to eat pork, crab, lobster, shrimp, bald eagles, crayfish, squids, crawdads, whatever they call them. Whatever these different these prawns, shrimp, all this, whatever weird shit you niggas eat now. Alligators, otters, seal, walrus meat, whale blubber. You ain't going to eat that stuff. You're not going to eat it. It goes on. It says, uh, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For all, so like it, for all shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity. And I will remember their sin no more. Okay. So, you know, it's right there in the scriptures. That's another cut on Christianity. Let's read a few more here for you people that keep trying to make, make like the Savior died on the cross to free you from the law. No, he, he died on the cross to reconcile his people back to the Heavenly Father. And in that, you have a covering for your sins that if you commit sin, that you might not be destroyed for it. The penalty of the law doesn't come back and nail you because of what the Savior did on the cross. That gives you grace. But it doesn't mean the law was done away with. We read it here in, in Matthew 5. and 17, he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. What? He didn't come to do away with the Father's law, destroy it, or anything. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. I am not, uh, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. It's right there. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot and one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And that also proves that there's no hell. Right? Shouldn't you automatically go burn for all eternity for teaching people to break the commandments? So this is the good news translation. It says, teaching about the law. This is Matthew 5, 17. It says, do not think that I have come to do away with the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets. I have not come to do away with them, but to make their teachings come true. Think about that. He told you plainly and openly do not think that I have come to do away with the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets. I have not come to do away with them, but to make their teachings come true. So you lied, cuz. Any of you Christians that say we are the law of liberty, that means we can live a free life. What free life you think you can, you can live? You can't commit adultery. You can't kill and murder. You can't steal. So what, what, what are you talking about? Is there some type of, of, uh, fine print in the contract which says it's talking about specifically about food. You want us to think that the Savior died on the cross so you could eat unclean things. Is that what you want us to think? That's stupid. It doesn't make sense. And this dude is just grinning. And really, you niggas just get mad over some fucking pork. There's so much other things you can't eat, too. It ain't just pork. Just like it's, it's, it's pork and the so-called white man Esau you niggas have an infatuation with. Let's read it one more time. Do not think that I have come to do away with the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets. I have not come to do away with them, but to make their teachings come true. Remember that as long as heaven and earth last, 
not the least point nor the smallest detail of the law will be done away with. Not until the end of all things. So then whoever disobeys even the least important of the commandments and teaches others to do the same will be least in the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, whoever obeys the law and teaches others to do the same will be great in the kingdom of heaven. That's very plain. Let's go to a few translations. Let's go to the NLT first. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 17. Do not misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses. What does abolish mean? They're just curious here. Abolish. Formally put an end to system, practice, or institution. Put an end to. The Savior said, I didn't come to put an end to the law. Do not mi don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of the Most High's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys the Most High's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Let's get one more, the NIV. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. One last one. This is Romans 3. Right? And I may just read just this, this version of it. Romans 3 and verse 30. I started 29. I started 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is not justified, Salakia. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. This is what Christians jump in. See, you got the faith of Abraham, you stupid ass. What about Isaac and Jacob? You got to have faith. And faith is going to make you want to keep these commandments. Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of your Howard Shires. You need both. Romans 3.28. Therefore, we conclude <clears throat> that a man is not justified by faith without. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. What does this mean? The Gentiles here spoken of as Israelite foreigners. The Romans were Israelites scattered among the, the real Romans, which were Edomites, living as, as one of them after their ways. But Paul said he was what? That he was a Roman citizen, <clears throat> but he was from the tribe of Benjamin. So he was a Gentile. He was at one point in a Gentile state of mind, just as we were. This is who is speaking of. Verse 30, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Who's the uncircumcision? Those were Israelites <clears throat> that were not keeping the ways of the Lord, right? They were scattered among the nations and they were acting in an uncircumcised manner. Let's see if here we can give you an example. Therefore... If the circumcision <clears throat> This is Romans 2 And verse 25 <clears throat> For verily so like here, For circumcision verily profiteth If thou keep the law But if thou be a breaker of the law Thy circumcision Is made uncircumcision So wait a minute You mean to tell me that an Israelite that's circumcised, right, <clears throat> following the ways of the Lord can become like one of another nation by breaking them? The answer is yes. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, 
Israelites that are not following the ways of the Lord, keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision right. That's why the Lord tells you to repent. If you repent, you're likened to one of those that you, you are circumcised. That's all it means. Can't get messed up on words. That's why the Lord said, if you, if him, him which is, uh, uh, if a wicked man turn and do all which is lawful and right, he should save his soul alive. Because why? If an uncircumcised Israelite keep the righteousness of the law, then his uncircumcision is made circumcision. Verse 30, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, through faith, period. Do we then make void the law through faith? Can you just say because you keep you uh you can have faith and you don't gotta follow the law? It says, God forbid. Yeah, we establish the law. That's easy. Very easy. Let's go to these translations. NLT. <clears throat> well, then if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. NIV. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. ESV. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. It's right there, man. Too easy. So this stupid notion that the Savior died on the cross to free you from the law. No. And as a matter of fact, Hold on here. Commandments are not. Oh, hold on, brothers. <clears throat> this is First John five and three. Verse two. By this we know that we love the children of the Most High. When we love the Most High and keep His commandments. For this is the love of the Most High that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. It's not a hard thing to keep the commandments of the Lord. And we know that keeping them is not going to get you saved. It's not going to be the reason why you're going to be saved. It's a combination of faith and uh, uh, keeping the law. But it's, it's, it's grace by which you're saved, which really is what? Pre-selection of the Heavenly Father. But, you know... You heard it. We don't need to be the dead horse. You Christians are stupid. You're on a low level. And we're really just tired of you. Just like we tired of these wicked Israelites. So no, son, you can't eat pork. And this guy's name was Antoine. Was it Antoine uh, something, another. Right up here. Antoine Markeith. You going off, Antoine. I got a damn... <laughs> Got a damn cousin named Antoine. <laughs> anyway, brothers, that's it. The Savior didn't die on the cross to free you from the law. The law going to be in our, it's going to be very much a part of us. It's here forever. It's never going away. We'll see you again soon, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.